Thank you, Paul, for this uh, awesome lecture. I think we found uh, already many cases to follow, not only in Poland, but in other countries perhaps as well. <laughs> Thank you. For me, uh, I was happy to hear that uh, Water Framework Directive uh, works actually as a button to push governments to remove the, the dams. So that, that was really um, the point uh, of your presentation I admire. And uh, the, the, well, the curiosity, which should be even more popular, is this um, restoration economy you talked about, because uh, well, at least we know that dam removal uh, it's needed, but uh, it's not um, like po it's not popular view. Like ordinary people, they don't really recognize that as a uh, need. So that tool uh, perhaps will um, will help will help in popularizing that trend, I guess. So if uh, anyone is ready to uh, ask or comment uh, to Paul's um, lecture. Feel free to write or feel free to speak. Eva, I have to tell you that in Spain is the same. Uh, people, uh, in the first moment you say about dam removal, people get in shock. They freak out and they say, uh, removing dams, why? You are going to waste, waste. They say waste. They're going to waste the water to the sea. And you are going to be putting money on wasting money. No, 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 no. I mean, in two minutes, if you have good two minutes to explain why this is important and creates jobs and why they do explain the water cycle, why this is crucial. Then the next question you get is, are we doing something about this? Are we, you know? So in the moment you have the chance to speak with the citizen and explain, the, the, the reaction is very positive, but you have to have the chance. You have to give them a chance, you know, to, to learn. Uh, Tobias, I see your hand up. Oh, it's muted. We, it's muted. we, we cannot hear you. You need to oh. unmute. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Wonderful presentation and uh, uh, very, very inspiring. And um, I would like to... To, to, to comment that I believe the restoration uh, that is now part of the EU strategy and the strict protection ideas need to be com combined. And I made that point earlier in the session that I was in. Um, and ecologists tell us that, you know, conserving and protecting what's still there is of course the, the first step because it's usually something that's still in some sort of some function or maybe even high value. And then restoration can make more value, add more value. And I think it's very important to, to make that link uh, and to see those two exercises connected. Um, but, but most importantly, that's my personal experience. Uh, and you were in the US and I had a chance to travel along the West Coast five years ago. It is just mind blowing to see these things happen and to see these structures disappear and the river come back. And uh, so I just, I wrote down, there was one article that you quoted from, I think it was uh, from the Kennebec River. Uh, it says, this dam removal helped river conservationists reimagining what's possible. And that's the point. I think these examples are just opening up your mind and saying, we can do this. Yeah. It's very difficult, but it's like a vision and it's, Inspired. It's You have amazing ways of presenting this and thank you so much for your awesome Thank work. you. No, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. I would like to point out you are so right. And actually you remind me something. Before, it's true it's important to restore, but before restoring, which means money, let's protect what we still have, what you said. And this is something that two days ago when I was uh, presenting in the European Commission in the Green Week, in the, in the session I was there, uh, Carlos García de Leani, who is the director of the AMBER project, in his presentation, it was the, one of the things he said in his slides. Okay, L if we are going to start removing dams, at least let's stop building them, you know? You know, because it's, it's so expensive to restore rivers. So why we are going to destroy something that later in 50 years we will have to restore? So thank you for pointing that out. I forgot to highlight, it's true. Let's first protect what we have and then we put money on restoring. Exactly, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. And it, I think re restoring, thinking about restoring makes us aware of what we are protecting. So there is this yeah. linked, and this is an amazing experience for me at least to see all this happening. Thank you. Okay, now I take the question from Eliza, then Arthur and Josef. So Eliza's comments, um, I would like to believe that nature is responsible for these actions, but it's not, uh, it's, is it not uh, that many countries are unable to hold the dam just? I didn't understand the question, sorry. Is there a question? Sorry. Uh, yes, and then you can read it on the chat. Oh, okay. In the, in the chat, which... Uh, I, I, I will try to repeat, so perhaps. Where, where is it? Yes, Elisa uh, is commenting or asking, I would like to believe that nature is responsible for these actions, but uh, is it not that many countries are unable to hold the dams? Is it clear, the question, or...? Okay, here it is. But is, is it not that many countries are unable to hold the dams? What do you mean? I would like to believe that nature is responsible. That's, I, I, I think that it means that they just need to remove them because they are too old. Perhaps oh, that's, okay, the, okay, okay. that's the, that's the case. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, if I, sorry if I didn't understand well, okay? No I'd like to say that, yes, nature is responsible for this uh, recovery right? Because you remove the dam, but then it's nature who recovers. But good point. I want to say something. It, uh, if you take too long to act, if you do it too late, nothing is going to happen. And I will give you an example, guys. Please remember, Spanish case, sturgeon, is extinct. The last individual was seen in 1992, but it's, that was the last one. So it's now officially extinct. If in, the, if in the miracle case, we would remove the dams in the Guadalquivir River, for example, the last river basin where the sturgeon was seen, the salmon is not coming back, uh, the sturgeon is not coming back. It's not coming back because it's extinct, okay? So you, get, you re reach to a point where there's no turning back, okay? And then you can do all the efforts you want, like in one of our regions in Spain, Catalonia, they are putting so much money to recover sturgeon in the Ebro River. They have to bring it from somewhere else, the sturgeon. It's not from the Iberian Peninsula anymore. And they are going to put millions of these. And it might work or not. Exactly. It's too late. So, so Elisa is, is right. Nature is the responsible. We, we have to give them a chance with enough time, you don't know when it's too late, okay? Arthur, you are the next one. Let me thank you, Pao, for a fantastic presentation. As you know, uh, we, we, we are trying as a Daina and Govinica River Association uh, uh, be a part of, of your actions, maybe in much smaller scale. But coming back to this uh, uh, Elisa's uh, question, I, I, I am afraid that uh, we touch only uh, a part of this question because uh, I don't agree with opinion when, when uh, nature is responsible uh, for situation thanks to uh, which uh, people before built a lot of dams. Uh, this, is, this is in opposite. Uh, we, we, we destroyed the system which was uh, maintain itself and dams uh, were uh, answer for first damages uh, channelizing and and drainage of, of uh, catchment area and the problem is that we are seeing uh, the situation where situation in rivers we still don't understand especially in Poland that uh, this is one system we have no rivers and the rest but this is catchment and when we touch catchment, we somehow have to or try to control it. But it is not controlled system. And every time it is possible that will come a, a rain enough big to remove our dams and all our, our way of thinking that we are able to control nature. 
At the same time, we are losing not only fish, fish are an icon of situation, but we are losing much more. We are losing water, water which is the main source on the land for us. So uh, it's fantastic idea to show the fish because fish, we like it. Uh, migratory fish are uh, very complicated cycles, but at the same time, we are losing much more. So when we will be able to invite, I don't agree, you fully lost Sturgeon. Maybe it is possible still to reintroduce well, a little but hope. Then, but then you need man action. Yeah, you yeah, action. yeah, yeah. Ah, it's not, uh, yeah. it, you know, so it, it, it won't be a, na a, re -na a natural uh, restoration, you know. But about water, what you're saying about water, I agree with you, Arthur. And that's why I put the, the slide with the South Korean um, case, mm -hmm. the green algae, because yeah, they yeah. cannot drink the water anymore. So I also wanted to show that water quality is a big issue. And friends, if you reread re the slices from friends, one of the main drivers is to recover water quality. So you are right. It's not only fish. It's water quality is uh, uh, um, aquifers, recharge, it's deltas uh, recovery because of nutrients and sediments not arriving to the deltas, you know. It's uh, uh, avoiding uh, erosion, uh, river channel, channel um, erosion downstream, which we have at least in Spain a lot of problem with channel erosion downstream. So it's a lot of things, many, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it is, uh, it is special we are talking uh, as a Polish because our government still try to force uh, our way of, of, of keeping and maintaining uh, rivers and water. We, we, we are still fighting with floods, we are fighting with droughts, and we are trying planning, or we, we as uh, citizens, we are financing uh, plans of new dams, having one of the last in Europe in beach part, free flowing rivers like Vistula River with only one dam in, in, in main body, uh, uh, important. And we have Odra, which, which had the longest part from these big rivers without dams. Currently it is not because we finished one dam. So <laughs> for us, it is, it is very strange situation uh, but we, I hope we will be able to follow the, the main way of looking for, for water problems. I, I sorry, to, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but uh, we have just okay, time sorry. for two more sorry. questions. And Arthur is uh, talkative as usual. <laughs> so we will talk uh, tomorrow, Paul. Okay. So I, I give the floor to Josef and then uh, Evelina will have a question. Uh, yes, hello. Um, uh, Evelina, you you're, you're the first, all right? Ah, okay, because sorry. He was, he was the first one. Josef? Um, I must say that uh, here in Poland, we have so many dams which are completely not necessary. Even they are, they have, have deleterious effect on the rivers and nobody wants to remove them. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the regulation steps on the whole set of, of mountainous rivers and as well some dams within the uh, the amelioration works, which are completely not needed. Uh, we simply, mm, are, and nobody wants to remove them. Just uh, if somebody w wants to even change something there, they say, no, no, it was, need it was needed because it is standing here. The, uh, function is nothing. And the, the letter is effect is nothing. Only that it is standing there, it is the, the point. So, in Poland, we still believe that the making the uh, fish passes is just the connecting rivers. It is not. But, mm -hmm. of course, this is the, the attitude which we have. And uh, 
all these investments are done not by private people or companies which must count the money. It is it's done by government and government doesn't need any control in such way. They want to do what they, whatever they want. Yeah. Joseph, just let me answer you that here in Spain, it was exactly the same situation just 40 years ago, exactly. I mean, the government had the power, actually four years ago, we were in a dictatorship. So imagine 40, 45 years ago. So uh, uh, not putting a dam in a, we, in, a, in a river for us was a waste of water. And, uh, and nobody ever would have talked about removing that. And when we started talking about this 20 years ago, it was terrible. You were a terrorist. I mean, you were a terrorist because of thinking about removing a dam. 20 years later, this is changing, okay? So I'm telling you just not to give up, not to give up and take advantage of the nice global uh, easy communication access we have now to put this on TV, to put this on the radio, take advantage of people in other countries like Finland, like us in Spain, like USA, just to show the good cases in your country so people start thinking oh the, uh, these people are doing this maybe they are not th th that crazy you know so little by little it's not going to change in one year or two but don't give up and keep fighting before it's too late don't worry Paolo, you won't give up <laughs> Evelina, your, your time is now for your question Hey, hello. Um, yeah, I would like to thank you for a very interesting presentation. <laughs> it's very nice to see so smart person, a lot of uh, uh, passion and so on. Um, I would like to ask you about some problems with water framework directive, because I have this impression that, for example, if we have the monitoring points between dams, yeah, and uh, indices shows that uh, analyzed parameters show a good water state, the um, authorities might not have to, uh, might not want to remove the dams. I had such situations, for example, on my river uh, during the national plans for river restoration. So I, uh, I proposed them to remove the well because uh, we will open the water for rivers and so on. And they said that, yeah, but we don't have to do that because the parameters say that we have a good, bad state because of water quality. So when we will remove the wear, we will have a very good water state and we are not mandatory to do that. So this is insane. And uh, the water framework, the framework, framework, framework the directive don't, uh, not always work in proper way. You are completely correct. It's not perfect. Water framework directive is not perfect. And actually, when you read the definition of a water mass, at least here in Spain, some streams are not included in that water mass. So you don't have to apply water framework directive to those streams because they are not in the water mass, or I don't know how to translate that in English. Masa de agua, water mass. You are right, it's not perfect. It was done it was done uh, 25 years ago, you know, it was, and, uh, and it's not great, but it's a start. It's really a start. We need a start. I, I, in that start, they, in 25 years ago, they, nobody, nobody was really removing dams and nobody thought that it would be needed to work in river fragmentation. They were only worried about pollution. And after, uh, improving the water quality and the pollution, they saw that we still didn't reach a uh, good quality status. So, so they see they saw then that they needed to work on, on river fragmentation, and it's just a start. As I say again, um, I think that the problem here in Spain too, we have the same problem. If your river is in good status, you don't need to do anything else because you have passed the exam. You know. But this is something that it will come. It's going to come. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Sorry, Evelina. But it will come. This is going to get improved in the future. And we are working on it, you know. So, so yeah, we have to keep uh, complaining as just you did. Yeah. Um, I know that ACRR also work about uh, work under uh, some documents be, uh, related to barriers. 
So yeah, we hope that uh, it will be also included in water framework directive. So fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I would like to thank you for teeing us up because I think we all face some difficulties and doubts and that's uh, really, really helpful that you showed us uh, the cases that uh, dam removal, it is possible even if it uh, takes a while. So It takes a while, but it's possible. And actually, thanks to the Internet Communication TV, we are going to contaminate, let's call it like that, <laughs> other countries. It will come. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it will come. So thank you. You're welcome.